Hello again. In this video, I want to step back and take a big picture view of why we're using perceptual maps and what we're trying to achieve. And I just want to connect it to the overall marketing process. So starting point in any sort of marketing research endeavor or analytical approach is what do we want to know? Sometimes in textbooks that's called management objectives. What are we trying to figure out or what's our research problem or management problem? But what do we need to know? So in terms of using perceptual maps, I've got four possibilities. One, we want to evaluate our branding activities, looking at our positioning success results. We've invested in it. We're trying to reposition or strengthen our positioning. How have we done? We might just want to flesh out a full picture of the brand to dig into the brand and see what attributes and values people associate with it. And we may have plans to really focus on enriching our branding, creating a distinct brand in the marketplace. We may be just looking at gaps and opportunities. So looking very much from a, a product perspective, what new products can we roll out? Can we introduce a new brand? Is there opportunities there? Are there opportunities in new markets? So it could be a, a bit more functional based. And it could be just to add to our knowledge, to build more market insights, increase our understanding of the marketplace by digging into how consumers think and feel and how they evaluate different brands. So once we know where we're heading and why we're doing perceptual maps, then obviously we'd, we'd need to undertake some market research because a perceptual map is based on consumers' information and their perceptions, their attitudes, their opinions, and how they're evaluating and choosing between the brands. Ideally, we would do some focus groups first and have open conversations and discussions with different uh, target markets, different segments, and to flesh out, help flesh out image attributes and statements and things we can build in to the some sort of image or brand survey. Because we're beginning to be asking to rate brands on a whole range of, of attributes and statements and, and uh, brand values. So we really need that input. If we've done that before, we would already have that list. And if we've obviously done brand surveys in the past, we want to uh, keep that going because we want that consistency. Then we would obviously execute the research, get the, the, the results. And once we've got the results from all these image questions, we need to run multiple um, perceptual maps. Now we just don't pick two attributes and go, there we go, that's our positioning, because we have goals to achieve, problems to solve, this is expensive, takes time, so let's spend the time on the analysis. So we actually run a whole bunch of, of maps, two axis maps, um, over and over, looking at different combinations. Uh, by segments, by competitors, etc. I've got a separate video that goes through all the analytical side of that. You can have a look at. And there are more than just a two-axis perceptual map, so we use different types of perceptual maps. So again, I've got another video on that. So we become quite analytical at this point. We spend some time going over the data. Then what will happen as we do that we will identify the key attributes, where consumers make decisions, where we're we popping out as a brand, where we're distinctive, and which ones really seem to matter. So we've obviously got some insight to that from our research, but once we start mapping the brands against those attributes and then looking at some market data, we are really gonna say, these are the attributes that we need to stand out on. This is ones where we're being attacked by competitors, uh, this one's where we are distinctive already. And after that, we've got this. We can then tell the brand story with a series of maps. Um, as a lecturer, I often see students put in one perceptual map and go, well, there you go. That's the story of our brand, and that's how we're positioned, and that's everything you need to know. In reality, brands, valuable brands at least, are far more deeper and richer than that. So we've got multiple maps we've produced. Some of those are going to tell different stories about the marketplace and in combination they can paint a nice story and if we use multi-dimensional maps etc they can also add to the story. 
So once it's finished out of this research, we've got this beautiful explanation and understanding of our brand and its components and how it fits in the marketplace. Then once we've got that story, we can evaluate our brand position. Is that where we want to be? You know, and evaluate against our marketing efforts. So that way we want to be, we've worked towards something, have that, has, have we delivered on that? Does it appear to be some sort of brand return on that? We had clear goals, clear expectations, a strategy in place. How has that been executed and how successful? So some form of evaluation here. Hopefully it's good. Sometimes it's not going to be so good, but then we can work out how to improve. And then ideally what we want to get to is the ability to identify relationships between these combinations. So we've got a marketing mix for us, marketing mix for other competitors. And keep in mind, when it comes to positioning and perceptions, this is formed through the combination of marketing mix elements, not just, not just advertising or communication. But consumers look at the, where, it, where it sells, its retailers, its price points, its product features, its packaging, um, if it's online, its reviews. All of those things come together to create positioning. So we've got to keep that in mind. So all these marketing mix elements create positioning for us and our competitors. And what are the results? What's the market share? What's the price premium? Uh, how profitable are these? So through this, we can identify and explain if we do these things, this appears to have this impact on our positioning and in turn, it has this impact on sales and results and profitability. So we are connecting positioning and perceptions into uh, a combination or a process. So then we can explain, yes, these things are important. They are minor changes to the marketing mix and they may cost money or they may help us a little bit, but they help craft the positioning. They help build the brand story. They tap into things that are important to consumers the key attributes, and as a result, we're gonna have a positive outcome. Hopefully, that's our plan anyway. And then finally, once we've got this sort of basic marketing model and this how it all connects, we can then go, what are we doing next? How do we use this information? How do we go forward? How do we keep growing this brand, strengthening the brand, strengthening our positioning if we need to, and making more money longer term? So. That's how it all sort of fits together from a big picture perspective. Hopefully that's helpful for you. Please like and subscribe.